<clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Beatles Forever. Uh, a few weeks ago, I made a video regarding the Help movie, so I thought it's only right to start talking about the Help album. And so today, we're going to find out some interesting things regarding the album. First off, how many songs did John, Paul, and George write for the album? And John wrote five songs for Help, and they were Help, You Got to Hide Your Love Away, You're Gonna Lose That Girl, Ticket to Ride, It's Only Love. And Paul wrote The Night Before, Another Girl, Tell Me What You See, and I've Just Seen a Face, and Yesterday. And George wrote two songs, I Need You and You Like Me Too Much. Uh, the Beatles started to experiment in the studio a little bit and created their own songs, and that engulfed the album except for the song Act Naturally and Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Uh, those two songs, of course, were cover songs. Uh, which song was the best song out of the list of songs by each Beatle, the songwriter? John's best song for help would have to be Help. Uh, all the songs of John's are really well done, but to pick just one, Help is John feeling overwhelmed. An insight on how the song came about is, uh, it appeared that John is to be credited for the lyrics as a whole, which relate to how he was truly going through as a famous Beatle. I mean it, it's real. It's just me singing Help, and I meant it. When Help came out, I was crying out for help. Uh, most people think it's just a fast rock and roll song. I didn't realize it at the time. I just wrote it at that time because I was commissioned to write it for the movie. But later, I knew I was crying out for help. It was my fat Elvis period. You see, uh, the movie he, I, uh, is very fat, very insecure, and he's completely lost himself. And I am singing about when I was so much younger and all the rest, looking back and how easy it was. I was fat and I was crying out for help. Well, I didn't really think John was really that fat. He looked normal to me, but according to him, he was a butterball, but I don't see it. <laughs> and then George Harrison adds, uh, John never said that when he wrote it, he said it introspectively. That was how he was feeling. He was plump and he had glasses and he didn't feel right. He looked like Michael Caine with horn rim glasses. <laughs> and out of the song that Paul wrote, his best song would have to be Yesterday. Uh, this is Paul at his best, being introspective and wondering what went wrong with his relationship. I had thought it was written about him and Jane Asher when they broke up, but then I found out that they were still together when this song was written. This song is so melodic and so melancholy, it stays in the mind when you hear it. Um, Paul had this song. According to John, uh, Lennon had later indicated that the song had been around for a while before. The song was about around for months and months before we finally completed it. Every time we got together the right songs for a recording session, this would come up. We almost had it finished, and Paul wrote nearly all of it, but we just couldn't find the right title. We called it Scrambled Eggs, and it became a joke between us. We made up our minds that only a one-word title would suit, but we just couldn't find the right one. Then one morning, Paul woke up, and the song and the title were both there, completed. I was sorry in a way. We had so many laughs about it. Uh, next up is George, and he had two songs on the album, and his best song from Help would be I Need You. Uh, John had just begun songwriting, and he was struggling. According to Wikipedia, George Harrison presented I Need You, along with You Like Me Too Much for Consideration, for the Beatles' second feature film, Help. And that was done in early 1965. Before this, he had struggled to complete a song since the band recorded his first composition, Don't Bother Me, for their 1963 album with the Beatles. In a September 1964 press conference, Harrison said he had written three bits of songs, but nothing whole. George Martin, the band's producer, attributed his lack of productivity to the fact that none of us had liked something that he had written, and Harrison felt discouraged uh, or disheartened. I could see how that would make you feel that way. Nobody liked <laughs> He subsequently uh, resolved uh, to ensure that his occasional vocal spots in the group's album were his own compositions rather than Lennon McCartney songs or cover versions. So that was kind of brave of him to try to step out and do his own right. So that's neat. Okay, uh, again, according to Wikipedia, Harrison wrote, I need you about his girlfriend, Patty Boyd, whom he had met in March 1964 while the Beatles were filming A Hard Day's Night. Their relationship provided Harrison with a sense of calm amid the frenzy of Beatlemania. For Boyd, however, the jealousy of the band's fans was confronting. 
The song's lyrics address a time when she left Harrison. Shortly before recording the songs, Harrison routined I Need You and You Like Me Too Much with John Lennon at the latter's house in Weybridge. In the film, the pair worked together in the early hours of the day of Ringo Starr's wedding to Maureen Cox, which took place on February the 11th, 1965. It seems that George and John got along well, and John was nice to help George out as he was beginning his songwriting career. Later, John got hurt when George's book, I Me Mine, came out, and John felt like George didn't mention jo John and how George looked up to him. <clears throat> George didn't really enjoy his Beatles experiences after the initial thrill wore off, so he didn't write a lot about that time. It was said that John was mentioned 11 times in the book, and according to George in a later interview, he said that he felt John was annoyed because he didn't say he had written one line of the song Taxman. But I also didn't say how I wrote two lines of Come Together or three lines of Eleanor Rigby, you know? John obviously assumed that this was supposed to be a full account of George's life and everyone in it, along with appropriate musical credits and influence. But George had taken a much more informal approach without the niggling, as he put it. Next up is, how did the cover for the album come about? They decided to do the word help spelled out with arms and flags, but then decided that it didn't look very good. Uh, so the Beatles ended up with them doing different arm position, positions instead. What ranking did the Beatles fall under for Rolling Stone's top 500 albums? Well, the Beatles ranked 331 on the list. And how did the Beatles get involved in the movies? The Beatles were under contract with United Artists to do three films, so it was a hard day's night, help, and let it be. If the Beatles didn't spell help on the album cover, what did their arm signals spell? <laughs> it was N-U-J-V. It really didn't spell a word, but it just looked better to the photographer, so that's what they went with. Next up is, uh, where did the Beatles' uh, help album rank on the British charts? The album was released August 6, 1965. It entered the album chart August the 11th at number one. Wow. And it stayed there for 11 weeks, so that's pretty impressive. All right. Uh, what is the most recorded song from Help? And I bet everybody knows the answer to that one. Uh, Yesterday was not only the most recorded song from Help, it's the most recorded song ever. It's been recorded by Elvis Presley, uh, Boys to Men, Frank Sinatra, James Brown, and Gladys Knight and the Pips. Uh, why didn't others Beatles play on yesterday? And according to the InsideHook.com, McCartney recalled showing the song to his bandmates and being surprised when they all said they didn't have much of anything to add to it. Ringo said, I don't think I can really drum on that, he said, and George added, well, I'm not sure what to put as a guitar either. And John said, I can't think of anything. I think you should just do it by yourself. It's really a solo song. Okay, now this was a kind of a big deal at the time because we never recorded like that before uh, Paul would continue. It had always been the band, and after some hesitation, I decided to give it a go. How long did it take to record the album? Well, it went on from February 15th through the 17th of June, 1965. So that's quite a long time. And this, the next one is how George Martin saved the day for the yesterday. As I mentioned earlier, the other Beatles had no idea what to play for Paul's song because it wasn't in the rock and roll vein of their other songs. George suggested that Paul play the song on an acoustic guitar and to sing the song himself with no backing vocals, which was the first for the Beatles. And then George Martin also suggested a string quartet, but Paul at first resisted. He didn't want it to sound syrupy, but John insisted, uh, but George, I mean, George Martin insisted that it could be done tastefully and a classic was recorded. Okay, what are the best five songs from the Help album? All right, first up is Ticket to Ride. This song, according to Song Facts, had two meanings. Uh, Paul had a cousin who ran a bar in a town called Ride, R-Y-D-E, and he and John had visited them there. And then Paul later mentioned that, although the song was primarily about a girl riding out of the life of the narrator, they were conscious of potential for a double meaning. And according to Don Short, who traveled with the Beatles in the 1960s, he recalled that John coined the phrase, Ticket to Ride, for another meaning. Uh, the girls who worked the streets in Hamburg 
had to have a clean bill of health, and the authorities would give them a card saying they were clean. Don later said that although he specifically recalls John telling him that, John could have been joking. You had to be careful with him like that. And this is a great song for the album. You have the electric guitars ringing out and the smooth harmonies by John and Paul. The main idea for the guitar riff was George Harrison's idea because of how John played the song for them when they first heard it. And Ringo's drumming is a result of hearing John play it for them too. And it was said that Paul did the guitar solo on his Epiphany Casino, and it led George and John to buy that guitar too. Uh, Paul still has that guitar today. He purchased it in 1962. It was a number one song for the Beatles for a good reason. Next up is Help. Uh, John told Rolling Stone magazine the whole Beatles thing was just beyond comprehension. I was subconsciously crying out for help. He felt like he was fat and depressed and crying out. John said he didn't like that it, it was slowed down for commercial reasons, the song that is. But Dave Marsh, the music critic, stated it perfectly. Help isn't a compromise. It's bursting with vitality. Lennon sounds triumphant because he's found a group of kindred spirits who are offering the very spiritual assistance and emotional support for which he's begging. Paul's echoing harmonies, Ringo's Johnny drums, the boom of George's guitar speak to the heart of Lennon's passion. And though they cannot cure the wound, at least they can add a note of reassurance that he's not alone with his pain. Well, that's true, because they were all going through the same thing at the same time, so they could lean on each other about that. And John said that this song in Strawberry Fields was his most honest songs. It's a classic. The harmonies are perfection, and John sings in earnestness, feeling stressed out about the Beatles' sudden success. Next up is You Got to Hide Your Love Away. This song, according to John, was him mimicking uh, Bob Dylan. John said he was like a chameleon, influenced by whatever was going on. If Elvis can do it, I can do it. If the Everly Brothers can do it, me and Paul can. Same with Dylan. Well, you can tell that this really is an influenced <laughs> Dylan song. The spokiness, folksiness there, and the acoustic guitar, but instead of a harmonica, the flute plays instead. John once again sings of how he was feeling at the time, and those kind of songs will always stay around because of the truth of the lyric. Next is I've Just Seen a Face. Now, this is Paul. This is a Paul song. He wrote the melody first, a country and western style, and later he wrote the words. He wrote the song at Jane Asher's parents' house where he lived with them. And this song is upbeat and happy. It was possibly inspired by his then girlfriend, Jane Asher. The song is fast-paced, and the lyrics are one of optimism and a love that's just beginning. The song is on two tracks, according to Wikipedia. On the first, George Harrison plays Lennon's Framus Hootenanny acoustic 12-string guitar, and uh, McCartney, his Epiphany Texan nylon string guitar, and Ringo, a brush snare. The second includes a lead vocal from McCartney and Lennon playing rhythm guitar with his Gibson J-160E acoustic. I never get tired of hearing this song. It's so alive and happy. Um, next up, and the last of the songs, uh, is Yesterday. I mentioned this song earlier in the video, so I won't repeat what I uh, mentioned before. The main thing about this song is that it was so great, Paul felt like he may have heard it before, and he didn't want to plagiarize it. I imagine he was greatly relieved to discover that it was his own creation. He may have become a little too possessed by the song, because at one point, during the shooting of Help, a piano was placed on one of the stages where the filming was being conducted, and McCartney took advantage of this opportunity to tinker with the song. Richard Lester, the director, was eventually greatly annoyed by this and lost his temper, telling McCartney to finish writing the song or he would have the piano removed. The patience of the other Beatles was tested by McCartney's work in progress. Uh, George Harrison summed this up when he said, Blimey, he's always talking about that song. You'd think he was Beethoven or somebody. <laughs> but this song is one of beauty, and it has such feeling to it with a wonderful melody, and it will remain timeless. The help the album was the Beatles once more becoming their own composers and relying on themselves to come up with songs instead of doing cover songs. John and Paul really stepped up to the plate and created home runs with this album. There's truly not a bad song on the album. They created different sounds ranging from pop to rock to folk country. There's something for everyone in this album, and it complements the movie beautifully. 
I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, in the disclaimer, I've added a few links to Amazon in case anyone would like to get some beetle items from there. If you do purchase from the link, I may get a small commission. Uh, there's no additional charge that you would have to pay by clicking on it. So I wish everybody a great day and tune in again soon for more of the Beatles Forever. Uh, and if you liked the video, if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could, that would be really wonderful. Uh, thank you and everybody have a great day. Bye.